ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackowitz, this is The Cage Review, and I said the other day that I was going to talk about WWE and how making money has killed their product. And I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of opinions about that, especially some of the older school fans. I started watching in like, let's say the mid-80s, and I was drawn into these larger than life characters and some of these amazing matches that they pulled off. You had, uh, you know, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. You had Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Uh, Roddy Piper versus Adrian Adonis. You know, and for the most part, these are characters. They're like larger than life characters that really grab people's attention. Uh, and very rarely was it just a guy dressed up like a normal guy with a normal name like you see in today's market. Things have definitely changed. Uh, fans have definitely gotten smarter about how... Think they've gotten smarter. Let me correct myself. Fans think they have gotten smarter about how wrestling works. Um, we all know that it's choreographed now. We know that it's not actual fighting. Whereas back then, you had a lot of people that totally bought into it. You know, they thought this was a real fight. But as times have changed, people have you know, realize that this isn't really wrestling as a competition, it's wrestling as entertainment. And it's still very talented in a lot of ways, honestly, at least it should be. And the biggest parts of wrestling are the storytelling and the performance in the ring. Now let's talk about how WWE making money has killed all of that. First, Vince McMahon wanted to kill his competition. He bought out the competition, and when he did, it drastically decreased the um, not only the writing, but the wrestling performance as well. When you kill the competition, you're basically a monopoly at this point. You don't have to invest so much time and effort into your product because people are, if they're a wrestling fan, they're going to watch whatever's put in front of them. And that's kind of what happened. Vince McMahon killed his competition. He bought out ECW. He bought out WCW. Well, now he's the only big name in wrestling. So he doesn't have to strive to beat WCW every week or ECW, whatever. And ECW really wasn't ever going to put WWE in a stance where they had to fight. But WCW did. And when they went away, instantly you could tell there was a decrease in the quality of the product. Okay, uh, it wasn't that bad at the time, but then WWE wanted to branch out and they wanted to make it more family friendly, so they went to PG. Now they can co incorporate the kids and have the kids be fans and sell a lot more merchandise. Well, that was great for them financially because now you have a bunch of kids who want to buy the merchandise of the John Cena's and the Roman Reigns's but you lost all the edginess to your product. Like everything that made WWE so cutting edge back in the Attitude Era was instantly gone. And as a huge fan of the Attitude Era, that really hurt wrestling for me because now not only do you not have competition that you have to try to beat and make a great quality product, but now you've completely lost the edginess that made wrestling cool at one point. Okay, so we get that. And I think a lot of wrestling fans held on for a long time because they wanted to see if they could course correct, you know, kind of readjust to this new uh, PG era. And we were hoping that they could still make a good product. And we slowly started to realize that it's never going to be what it was. It just, it's never going to happen. And then you started dealing with the networks that they were involved with in these multi-million dollar deals and now billion dollar deals. And it's financial security for the company so they can put out whatever the hell they want to put out. They don't have to take the time to perfect the craft for all the wrestlers. They don't have to take the time to write the amazing storylines that they once had. They don't have to take the time to build characters to get you wholly invested in storylines and people. 
And so all of this has created a downward spiral for the product. And I do believe that there is a dumbing down in America. And I've said that for a very, very long time that uh, people don't read as much anymore. They don't, the quality of acting has gone down. The action star has been replaced with a lot of special effects. Um, musicians, their product is like, it's overproduced and under talented where it used to be three guys that really had to know how to play their instruments. Now everything is done electronically and you can take somebody who sounds terrible live and make them sound amazing on a CD. And it's kind of the same thing with wrestling. You don't have the quality of wrestlers that you used to have in WWE anymore. You have this influx of people where they wanted to again branch out and make people um, enraptured by a face or an attitude, a look. And that's why we had the influx of the Divas division who were a bunch of models that didn't know a damn thing about wrestling. And honestly, a lot of that happened with the guys too. They got a lot of, you know, what I'm guessing is, you know, good looking dudes and they can't fucking wrestle. And that has killed the product. And as of late, you've had like the likes of Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, uh, Bailey, Asuka, you know, some women that really can wrestle and get in there and mix up. And I really appreciate that. I really do. But even saying that, their champions as of late have been like Carmella, who is a cute face that can't wrestle at all. Nia Jax, who's a fucking walking public service announcement and can't wrestle at all. Um, and even right now you have the B team, who are a couple of guys who have very little personality and they're barely okay in the ring. And they're the tag team champions. And it's like all these people that are holding WWE belts right now in the company would not even be jobbers of like 10 years ago. Like, they wouldn't even be thought of in the Attitude Era. And here they are as champions. And everything has gone downhill because of that. And WWE has made their product very commercialized. Everything is about selling and making it the biggest and the best. And, you know, we're brought to you by this. And so they throw in these stupid-ass commercials now. And they try to be very PC, which I can't stand. WWE is trying to branch out and grab the attention of everybody, the LGBT or whatever the hell it is community, um, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that as long as it's not a fucking public service announcement, which it has become. Um, again, Nia Jax, you know, big girls, you can be whoever you are, the big public service announcement. All of that takes away from what WWE used to be. It used to be cool, edgy, great matches, great storylines, great characters. All of that has been lost in the search for more money. And I honestly believe, or at least I'm hoping, that WWE is going to make money despite themselves. Because at some point, I have to believe that fans are going to smarten up and realize what wrestling used to be and be like, we deserve better than this. Because honestly... Uh, I've been doing my WWE reviews. I review Raw, SmackDown, and the pay-per-views. And I have not spent a dime on WWE in months. I have not watched USA Network. I've watched the programs on YouTube because I don't believe they deserve my money. I don't believe they deserve the ratings. And I'm one of those people who I kind of stand my ground on things like this because the product has been horrible absolutely just terrible um it's very hard to have any kind of suspension of disbelief when you have two people in the ring that can't move they're out of place they don't know what the hell they're doing it's a hot mess a lot of times there's no consistency in their storylines there's no consistency in the character build-ups and there's not even any consistency in the rules of the matches sometimes the referee has the final say in his referee's decision stands. But then other times, Stephanie McMahon or somebody can come in and just decide to change everything. Uh, even simple things like holding the bottom rope, breaking or not breaking, or shoulders being pinned down or not being pinned down. Uh, there, there's a lot of inconsistency there. And 
I could give specific matches for everything I just said. And it, it's terrible how unthought out everything is nowadays. You have a feud with Bailey and Sasha Banks that has gone back and forth for literally months and months. They hate each other, they're best friends, back and forth. Uh, and it looked like there was finally going to be a collapse there. And now all of a sudden they're back to best friends and all of that fucking work just went right out the window. And that's, that's what I mean. It used to be that there was a few writers and they had a consistent idea of what they wanted it to be. Now there are a bunch of writers and nobody has any idea what the other person is doing. And it's killing the product. And they're trying to make everything politically correct and to reach out to every group of people, whether it be white, minority, um, men, women, straight, gay, it doesn't matter. They just try to reach out to everybody, but they do it in such a way that it's so in your face that it's like, this is not wrestling anymore. This is a public service ad. And it, it just really disheartens me when I watch this because I want to be a fan. And I said, I think it was my last review where I have fan moments nowadays, but I'm not a fan of the product anymore. And that sucks because I used to be such a big fan of the product. Even with stuff like uh, some of the match types that they have now. Let's take the Elimination Chamber for example. The Elimination Chamber used to be such a cool idea and it had this metal structure and part of the suspense was that you knew that when somebody landed on that metal grate outside it was going to fucking hurt. And there was this like tension there. Well now they take the Elimination Chamber away, bring it back a couple of years later and it's nothing but pads that takes all the suspension away. And don't get me wrong, I understand that the bodies go through hell in the WWE when they put on matches like that, but that's the fucking point. That's why they make these massive paychecks because they're putting their bodies on the line. That's what makes the drama. And when you come back with the Elimination Chamber all padded up, you have nothing. All the suspense is gone. Uh, just like Extreme Rules. Well, you're politically correct now. You're a PG show. You don't use blood anymore unless it's an actual hit like a Brock Lesnar elbow. So, nothing is, is extreme about Extreme Rules. Usually, there are a bunch of basic matches that don't sell anything. Like, WWE has to just scrap that all together because it just doesn't work anymore. Um, so, this is my train of thought on how making money has really lowered the quality of the product of the programming. And Raw has been horrible for months. Uh, it has just been garbage. And I, I want to consistently do the reviews because I guess I'm waiting for them to get better. And there are a lot of fans, you know. So I try to do that. But in my honest heart of hearts, I'm not a fan, I don't like the product, I don't like a lot of the wrestlers nowadays, and it really sucks to watch because, you know, when I was growing up, it was such a cool thing. And when I was in high school, I used to go to the shows, especially in Indianapolis, man, I was there for the um, Degeneration X State of the Union address. Oh my God, it was great. I think that was the same show that, um, the New Age Outlaws threw Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack off the stage in the dumpster. Um, you know, they, they just had some really cool edgy stuff back then. And to see what it's become is kind of heartbreaking because there are no more Shawn Michaels. There are no more uh, Bret Hart's and Triple H's, The Rock's, Stone Cold's. They're, they're all gone. And as far as like technical wrestlers, like there's very few left. You certainly don't see the Eddie Guerreros and the Chris Benoit's. Like, and it, it, we all know Chris Benoit really screwed up his legacy. And he did. I don't care what you say. You, one does not overcompensate the other. Like, you can't um, say, oh, you know, you got to look past that. He was such an amazing wrestler. No, you don't look past what he did. Um, but having said that, you know, you just can't find his replacement nowadays. Like, there's just nobody there. AJ Styles, I think, is probably the peak of WWE right now. He is absolutely amazing in the ring, and he can cut a decent promo. And honestly, he's not even the best on promos. 
Uh, same with Daniel Bryan. He's amazing in the ring, and he's decent on promos. Uh, Samoa Joe, I really like on promos. And he can pretty uh, pretty well sell any match he's in. Uh, Samoa Joe, is he's a, definitely a double threat when it comes to promo and in-ring work. Um, but other than that, man, I don't know too many people that are in WWE right now that are that damn good. Kevin Owens is very, very good, too. Amazing at promos and amazing in the ring. Like, for a big guy, he can do some crazy shit, and he always puts his body on the line in big matches. I give Kevin Owens a lot of credit. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where we're at, though. I mean, there's really not too many other people that I think are top tier anymore. Like, Roman Reigns being pushed as the guy I honestly think is a joke. And not because he's terrible in the ring, I think he's decent in the ring. He can put on an entertaining match. Um, it has gotten overused and stale now, and it's very his matches are very repetitive, uh, so it does get monotonous. But the guy completely sucks on, on a microphone. Like, I'm sorry, but he cannot connect on a microphone. But he's being pushed because, again, you know, going back to the commercial side of WWE, there's a lot of kids who like him. He looks like a superhero, and they want to buy his merchandise. And so the parents go out and they buy all this Roman Reigns shit. And so he is pushed continually in our faces as a legit top-tier guy. When it really all it comes down to is dollar signs. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of my take on WWE right now. I, I'm completely disappointed in the product. I'm disappointed in how they treat things nowadays. And hopefully fans will get smart enough to stop watching, stop paying for the network, stop paying for pay-per-views. And that'll send a very clear message to them that, you know what? We don't like this product. We don't care. We can go watch it on fucking YouTube if we want to. And that's what it is. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you not agree? If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And if you agree, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackwitz. Cage Nation out. Thank <laughs> you.